Welcome back to the channel and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to make a weaving simulation in Blender. So this is really cool because we're going to be looking at something called hooked objects. It allows us to take pinned groups on a piece of cloth and or any sort of bits that we want and we can kind of hook them and animate them while we're simulating our cloth. Now I've covered this before but this is a bit more of an advanced version. So this is somewhere between beginner and intermediate but I think it's a ton of fun I will be uploading the final result that you see over here to my Patreon. So um, let's jump in and make a cloth weaving simulation. I think you guys will really enjoy it. With a new scene open up in Blender, let's select all the default objects and press delete. We're then gonna go Shift A. We're gonna go to our mesh options and add in a plane. And let's just go S2 to scale it up two times and hit enter. And then let's go Control A and just apply to scale. That's important. So Control A and apply to scale. Let's tab into edit mode and let's go to our edge select option. And let's go into our top of graphic view by pressing seven on the number pad. We're gonna come here to the back. We're gonna go control R. And you see there is a yellow line when we press that. And we're gonna roll the middle mouse button. And we're gonna roll it until we see five of these yellow lines. Okay, so five yellow lines and then double click to add them in. And while they're still active, you're gonna go control B to create a bevel. And let's just make a slight bevel and then click and with that done, just deselect them and then come over here this way and go control R and roll in some loops and let's roll in, I'd say about this many and then double click. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here, control R, roll your middle mouse button twice, control R, roll it twice to add in three segments. Do the same in this section and this section, this one here. And then over here, control R, roll the middle mouse button two times. And now what we're gonna do is just go to our face select and then go shift, alt, and left click. And left click over here. And each one of these, where you can see we have this little dividing segment. We're just gonna, while we're holding shift and alt, just left click, left click in there, just to select those like so. And then we're gonna go X and delete those faces. And now we have this. So back to our top orthographic view, we're just gonna press A to select everything. Shift D to duplicate and then R90 and hit enter. Then go G and Y and move it along and let's move it to about here and I'm gonna click. And then let's just select this back one and just press delete and delete the vertices. So we only have four segments going this way. In fact, I think we have five here. Let's just make sure we get rid of that one. So we just want four of these segments here and six of these segments over here. And with that done, what we're gonna do, we're gonna to go to our vertex select option. We're gonna go over to our object data properties and we're gonna go plus and just create a new group. Let's just double click on it and call it pin. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and select all of these verts over here in our top orthographic view, and we're gonna go ahead and assign them. Then all of these ones here at the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and assign them. And then all of these ones going like so, and these ones going over here like so. And let's go ahead and assign them, okay? So this is the selection that we have like so in our top orthographic view. Then what we need to do and this is where it gets a little bit tedious, but this is um, kind of like an important thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna grab these guys over here. We're gonna press F3 and we're gonna go hook. So type in hook two, and let's go hook to new object, like so. And then go one up and select these guys and do the same thing, press F3. And we can see here we already have it. So I'm just gonna click on it. And I'm gonna keep going, select these guys press F3, click on hook to new object, and then move up. Get these guys over here, F3, hook to new object. So do it to all of the six ends here. F3, hook to new object. Over here, F3, hook to new object, like so. So now we have these one, two, three, four, five, six hooked. And with these guys over here, these ones, we can do them a bit differently. So we're gonna hold and shift and select these guys. And then these guys over here. So you can see over here, this is the selection. So one on this side. So we have these, this side selected and this side. And we're gonna press F3, hook to new object. And now it places the hook in the middle here, which is what we want. And then let's go over here, select this one, holding in shift, select this side. F3, hook to new object. And let's keep doing that. So for this one, let's grab this side as well. F3, hook to new object. And then lastly, let's select these and these. F3, hook to new object. 
tab out, and now we have all these hooks. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna select all of them, like so, and holding in shift, let's just select one of them. So it's the main active element. Let's go to properties here and hold in alt. And while you hold in alt, come here and change it to cube and all of them will change to cube. And if you're still holding in old alt, just come here and slide the size down till we get something like this. Okay, so now that's much better. So now let's grab this cloth over here. Let's go over to our physics. Let's give it a cloth. Let's come down all the way to collisions and give it self collision. And let's also go over to our modifiers and let's just go all the way up and just downsize all of these hooks like so. There we go. And we want to make sure, and this is really important, we want to make sure that the cloth modifier is actually at the very bottom. So it shouldn't be anywhere above any of these. It needs to be at the very bottom here. And then we need to go back to our cloth over here, our physics. Let's go all the way down to our shape. Let's go to the pin group here and select that pin group we created. So now, if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see this is our cloth simulation and we have these hooks that we can use to control things, okay? I'm also gonna select the cloth, just right click and go shade smooth. Okay, so now we can do the animation. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select the cloth, I'm gonna to go to my modifiers and over here with the cloth, I'm just gonna turn it off for the viewport so we can animate without it being interrupted. And then let's go over here and let's select all of these guys over here. Just these six over here. Let's come to frame 10 or I'd say frame one. Let's actually come to frame one and let's press I to insert a keyframe. Now, if you're using Blender 4.2 and you press I, it'll just add in a keyframe over here and you can see. If you're using an older version of Blender, you'll have all of these options come up for like location, rotation, scale. In that case, just make sure to select location. Then we're gonna drag up to frame 30. And on frame 30, we're gonna select this one, this one, whoops, this one here. So every second one, like so. So you can see this is, this is what we have selected. And we're gonna enable auto king over here. We're gonna go G, Z and move it up to about here. And then let's select these guys over here. This one, this one, and this one and go G, Z and move it down like so. And then we're gonna come up to frame 60 and on frame 60, we're gonna come over here and then select these guys, these three. We still have auto king enabled. We can go G, Z and move them down roughly to where these guys are. And then let's select the other three Let's go G, Z and take them up to where the other ones used to be. So now let's already look at a pattern. You can see over here, this is the pattern. Okay, so all we have to do now is select all of them. Okay, so select this one, this one, this one, and these guys here. And with all of them active, come over here and just select these two keyframes, as you can see here, and then go Shift D and duplicate them and let's drag them till the first one is at frame 90. So now from frame 30 onwards, we should see this as you can see, okay? Pretty cool. So what we wanna do is we wanna select this guy over here, this, this um, first one over here, and let's come over to frame 10. And on frame 10, we're gonna go ahead and press I to insert a keyframe. There we go for this guy. And then we're gonna drag over to frame 30 and on frame 30, we're gonna go G, Y and drag this guy all the way over here, like so, till it's about here, as you can see. So G, Y and drag it here, okay? I know it doesn't look right at the moment, don't worry about that. And then we're gonna select the second one over here. We're gonna come up to frame, frame 60 and on frame 60 of the second one selected, in fact, I don't think we wanna be at 60 yet. Let's just go to frame 40 and in frame 40, with it selected, we're gonna press I and insert a keyframe. Then we're gonna come up to frame 60 and we're gonna go G, Y and move it up. And let's move this one still next to this one over here on frame 60. We still have the auto keying enabled. And to see what this looks like for now, let's just select our cloth. Let's go over to our modifiers and just enable the cloth and then go to frame one. Tab in and out of edit mode. Cause sometimes there's a glitch if we don't. Then hit the space bar and you can see this is what we have. Now, if you have any of these sort of weird interactions, don't worry, um, we can fix that with the quality settings. Okay, so let's actually go over to our cloth physics. Let's come to the quality steps here and make it 20. And with the collisions down here, the, let's make that something like eight. Now let's go back to frame one, tab in and out of edit mode, and then hit the space bar.
And if you're still having that issue, what we might have to do is just offset the animation a little bit. So let's grab this first one here. And let's grab that second keyframe we created for frame 30. And let's just go G and drag it up to frame 40. And let's grab the second one. And let's just grab that end keyframe in frame 60. Let's just go and drag it up to 70, just to give it a little bit more time. So let's go back to frame one. Let's hit the space bar and see if that makes a bit of a difference. Okay, so what we might have to do is grab these three bottom ones over here as they're coming down. Let's come to frame 30 and on frame 30, let's just go G, Z and drag them down even further with the auto keying enabled. Let's go back to frame one, tab in and out of edit mode and let's hit the space bar. And now we can see it has more clearance and we're not getting that issue. Okay, so you can see over here, let's grab these three over here that are gonna be in the way. Over here on frame 60 and on frame 60 with them selected, let's just go G, Z and move them down even more. Let's also come up to frame 120. And let's just go G, Z and move them down on frame 120 as well. Grab the cloth, tab in and out of edit mode, go to frame one and let's hit the space bar. And now that they're going down more, you can see that is working much better. Okay, now that is working really good. So sometimes it's just a little bit of tweaking. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna also grab this one the third one and let's come to frame 80 and let's press I to insert a keyframe and then let's come over to frame 90 and on frame 90 let's go G Y and drag that one in to about here till it's next to the second one over here like so and you can see there's the keyframe let's grab the cloth tab in and out of edit mode go to frame one then hit the space bar and let's see what that looks like There we go. And now we just have our last one here, which is this one over here. Let's come to frame 100. With it selected, press I to insert a keyframe and then come over to frame 120 and go G, Y and drag it in till it's about here. So G, Y, bring it here. There we go. And now if we go to frame one, let's have a look at that. Hit the space bar and we can see this is our weaving simulation. And then the last one. Cool. And now all we have to do is close it up. So let's grab all of these guys over here, the bottom ones, and let's come to frame 140 and go G, Z, and kind of move them till they're just kind of like on a floor level. And let's grab these guys at the top and go G, Z, and move them down till they're roughly in the same spot. And let's turn off Auto King. And now what we can do, we can go to frame one, Hit the space bar and let's see what that looks like. There we go. And then the simulation closes up. There we have it, a weaving simulation. So now let's select the cloth. Let's go to our modifiers, add modifier, search and type in solid. Let's give it a solidify to make it thicker. There we go. Let's go add search and type in sub and give it a subdivision surface. And now that's looking much better. So what we can do is we can grab the cloth, we can go into our materials, go new. Let's call one blue. Let's go plus, go new and let's call it red. And let's grab the blue one in, in the um, viewport display, we'll make it blue. Let's grab the red one and in the viewport display, we'll make it red. Then just tab into edit mode and just select all of these guys over here and click on the red and just assign that. And then let's go into object mode again, go to frame one. And what we need to do is we need to go over to our physics. We need to go to our cloth all the way down over here to cache. I'm gonna go over 120 frames. And I'm gonna go ahead and click bake. And now it's baked into the blend file. So now here you can see this is our simulation. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I'll be uploading the final result to my Patreon and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.